How and why did the idea of founding NYLC come to you? Well, I needed a place to put all these camps that I had worked on and developed through a program in St. Louis that uh, the the, uh, the parent organization, uh, the American Youth Foundation, decided that they wanted to shift away from what I was doing, which was working with core city kids and, and suburban kids uh, around youth leadership training. And when they're uh, when they downsize from about 30 staff to about five, uh, I, I lost my job. I mean, I was, and yet we had the most successful uh, leadership program in the American Youth Foundation. And, and so the, the, the decision was, what do we do next? And at that point, I was working with programs in St. Louis, in Gary, Indiana, New York City, uh, Cherokee Nation, Oklahoma, Chicago, um, and and so we convened at the t- uh, after the the announcement was made that the uh, the leadership camps that I was running all over the largely the Upper Midwest in uh, four or five different locations every summer. Um, we and as I asked him, well, what, where do you, what do you want to do next with this? Do you want to go on with it? And fortunately, several of them said yes, and they said they had some funding. And so I said, well, where are we going to do it? Well, our, our evaluators for all the, the camps and the leadership programs that I was doing came from the University of Minnesota. And so they said, if you, uh, if you want to keep doing this, uh, why don't you come to the University of Minnesota We'll give you an office and three months of salary, and then it's up to you. And so I said, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. <laughs> and so with my, my family, we, we, we loaded the U-Haul, and we drove from St. Louis to uh, Minneapolis. And so, I mean, I literally had to form a nonprofit to be able to do the work that was already underway. It was a... Uh, uh, a modification of the of, of an outward bound kind of experience that had strong uh, social justice and service dimensions to it in a in an intensive kind of twelve day program, and then there was a follow on service model to it. This was this was in the uh, started in the in uh, uh, nineteen seventy nine, and then I came to Minnesota in nineteen eighty three. So I had about I think I had three years where I was really running these programs all over the Upper Midwest. And uh, who was working with you at that time? As far as staff or? Yeah. Well, there was a whole kind of um, crew of largely college students at the time. I was the only. So full- they were kind of trainers? Yeah. They were in your program. Yeah, trainers in, in, in the program. And they were, they were largely college age people. And uh, in fact, our, it's, it's kind of fun because several of them have gone on to become a part of my board of directors now. <laughs> One of, them, one of them was our business manager. He was a junior at Kansas, University of Kansas. And uh, he's now a professor and a, uh, the head of, head of the uh, immigration law division at the uh, Michigan State and uh, law school. And uh, yeah, anyway. So those were the early days. Those were the early days. I mean, he was, and there, uh, there were a lot of, there were a lot of people around as there are now who, who are coming out of a, a, an experience in college and university life where they really wanted to apply what they want to do as far as, you know, in, you know, proverbially uh, changing the world. They want to do stuff. And so we paid nothing, but we gave a lot of, they got a lot of great experience, you know. And uh, so we staffed with, with college and, and, and teachers uh, who wanted to work in the summer. And a lot of them went on to apply what became service learning in their classrooms. 